Father, we're asking that you give us the bread of life this afternoon. We're thirsty and we're asking that you give us the water of life to drink. We know that we do not know enough, so we're asking that you share the knowledge that we need to know with us in Jesus' name. We ask that what we study and what we read, what we meditate upon from your word, from this very day will strengthen us in the inner man. In Jesus' name we pray. It's always a wonderful thing to know that where two or three are gathered in Christ's name, He is there in their midst. And whenever Jesus is in a place and is allowed, he will bring them closer to uh, his own heavenly father. What we want to read or study from the word of God this afternoon before we go on our knees to pray appears to be a common subject that everybody obviously ought to know something about. But yet it is something that most people, even believers, are ignorant about. And yet, whether we read about it or not, we cannot avoid coming across it once in a while. And the general ignorance that prevail among, uh, prevails among believers and non-believers has been very costly, especially for the unbelievers who are prepared for such a subject like this. And many times among believers there has been unnecessary fear, undue sorrow, as well as foolish panic because of the ignorance they have towards a subject like this. And they, because of this um, unbelief has um, run rampant among many, many people. Much harm has been done. Sometimes much money wasted. And then discussions among believers have been uh, going in the wrong direction because of ignorance concerning such a subject like this. And in fact, I had two different uh, reasons that I felt were so serious uh, why I would not want to talk about a subject like this, especially today. Why I felt we should not talk about this subject today. But I saw that the Lord especially wanted us to look into this subject just for today. And it is the subject of death. 
Now that I've mentioned the subject, you might uh, begin to wonder why are we studying about that? Because nobody wants to die. And yet, what we want to look into in the word of God is uh, just about this death. There is much that, that the Bible has to say about death. Various forms and various types of faces of death. That many people do not know anything about. Unbelievers die. Unbelievers die. Unbelievers die. What is the difference between the believer's death and the unbelievers' death? Now Jesus Christ also died. What is the value of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ? We want to start by saying that um, it's not only physical death that is revealed in the word of God. Then we may also say it is not physical death that is the most serious of the various types of death revealed in the Bible. We know that many people fear physical death because they do not understand death. The people who are in charge of the mortuaries in the land do not understand death. And those who are digging the graves almost every Saturday or every time and seeing the dead buried, they do not know anything about the subject of death. There is a spiritual death. There is physical death. There is eternal death. But there is another type of death as well. So which means that we can trace at least four types of death in the Bible. And among all these, it's only physical death that people know anything about. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, the Lord definitely talked about death to Adam. Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day, notice that, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so, death passed upon all men, for all, for that all have sinned. Nito rige ge bie she titi ipa odo ini akan, wwa ye, ati iku ni pa e she. Be ni kusi ko jasori e ni an bubu, la ti odo e ni ti bubu e ni an ti de she. Verse 14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. In verse 16, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. We are told that the day that Adam ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and of the good and evil, he died. And 
and we're told in this passage I have read now that death passed from him to all people. The question is, in what way did Adam die when he ate of the tree that God told him not to eat? Ephesians chapter 2 From verse 1 And you are sick wicked Who were dead In trespasses and sins That, that passage talks about Those who are still living In sin And it talks about them as dead First Timothy chapter 5 verse 6 But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth So then the death that Adam died it's not a um, separation from the physical world he was still alive physically he was still conscious of his physical environment but yet he had died because the word of God was fulfilled that says the day he eats of that fruit he will die and actually he died in James chapter 1 verse 15 then when lust has conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death he was separated from God that's the meaning he lost the life of God that is the meaning the grace of God the love of God the favor of God was no more with him he had died he was separated from the presence of God the word of God was no more operative within him the life of God was now separated from him the light of God the glory of God was no more within this separation from the life of God is the death that the Bible is talking about when it says sin bringeth forth death that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth or when it says uh, you know that he that doeth this is, is worthy of death the wages of sin is death and so when we have committed sin or when we have gone into sin we are separated from God and it is death and as uh, these people who have not known the Lord have died even like this yet they do not know and they go about as if they are still alive but the day you hear the gospel when you know that Jesus died for our sins so that, so that he can remove all our sins away from us he can cleanse our sins with the blood of Jesus Christ and then you come before God telling him to forgive you to remove your sins that you will no more go the evil way once you do that then your sins will be blotted away the death that you have spiritually will be taken away the separation that has been between you and God will be taken away you will be born again there will be new fellowship between you and God but do you know that even then you are still counted as 
dead. That may surprise you. When you were still in sin. As a child of the devil. You were counted as dead. By God. Because you were separated from God. Now that you are born again. Now that you are a child of God. You are counted as dead. But no more by God. Because you are alive unto God. But you are dead unto sin. You are dead to the world. And to the devil. It is like you are dead. You are separated from the devil. You are separated from darkness. You are separated from the power of the enemy. And um, in Galatians chapter 2. Verse 19 and verse 20. It shows the life and uh, the state of the believer. And this shows that it's not just uh, going to the church or just uh, reading the Bible or just uh, doing some religious things. It definite work of grace will be done in your heart when you are born again. Verse 19, For I through the law am dead unto the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I lay. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I live in the flesh. Your crucified with Christ once you have left the world you have left your sins and you have come into the kingdom of God this is what the epistle to the Romans is telling us in chapter 6 reading from verse 1 Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may Abound. Shall we continue to lie that grace may abound? Shall we continue in unrighteousness that grace may abound? Shall we continue in fornication? Continue in wickedness. Continue in covetousness. Continue in envy and jealousy. Continue in deceit, backbiting and gossiping. Shall we continue as proud people? Shall we continue in disobedience? So that the grace of God may abound. The answer is in verse 2. God forbid. How shall we that are dead? How shall we that are dead? For those who don't understand the Bible, they get confused. When it says the sinner is dead, and yet when it says now by the Apostle Paul that the believer is also dead, the unbeliever is dead in sin. But the believer is dead to sin. And he does not continue in the sin because he is separated from sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? As the, as the Bible is talking of the death of the unbeliever, it's talking about the death of the believer and it's talking about the death of Jesus Christ. 
Spirit in so ni pa iku ni gbagbo be lo so ni pa iku ala igbagbo be na lo si so ni pa iku Jesu and these are different one from the other gbogbo won si yato si ara won Jesus Christ died so that sinners who are dead in sins may become sons of God who are dead to sin Jesus Christ si iku fun awon elese ti o ti ju oku sinu ese kon ba le yi pada ki won si di eh ki won si di eniyan mimo fun Olorun when Jesus was on the cross he said my god my god why have you forsaken me nigba ti jesus wa ni ori agbelebo wi pe olorun mi olorun mi e se ti wa fi ko mi sile he was forsaken on the cross so that the sinners who are separated from god will be reconciled unto god and separated from the world i cause jesus christ sile ni ori agbelebo ki olorun ba le ki awon elese ba le ba olorun laja nipase iku re ati ku won si ya pa kuro ninu aye and you are baptized into christ you are put and immersed into christ by the sacrificial death of jesus christ as we baptize re pelu christi eyi ni pe am asi o pe pelu re nipa iku re ti o ti ku ni ori agbelebu and in verse um, in verse 6 ninu ese ikefa knowing this that our old man is crucified with sin nitori awa mo eyi pe akan ogologbo okunrin wa ma agbelebu pelu that the body of sin might be destroyed ki a le pa ara ese rin that hence for we should not serve sin ki awa ma se sin ese mo remember now we are talking about the believer ran ti ni sisin pe an so le pa oni gbagbo how the believer is also dead bi oni gbagbo pelu se ku but it is a different a different type of death sugbon iku to yato ni for he that is dead is freed from sin nitori pe eni ti o ku o ti je omira kuro lowo ese that is you are so separated from sin eni pe o ti yapa kuro lodo ese that you are free from sinning o ti yapa kuro ninu dida ese now if we be dead with christ we believe that we shall also live with him nitori awa mo pe bi at was age nip sugbon bi awa ba ba christi ku awa ba ba pe awa o si wa laye pelu re was 11 ese iko kan la likewise right so yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord be ni ke yin pelu ka ara yin bi oku si ese sugbon bi alaye si ododo ninu Christi Jesus and so when we become believers nitori na ni gba ti a ba jo ni gbagbo we are separated from sin aya pa kuro ninu ese separated from satan aya pa kuro ninu kuro lodo satan separated from darkness aya pa kuro ninu okun separated from worldliness aya pa kuro ninu ibare aye and uh, the devil will know that we are separated from him Yes, in that case he can't source us there and God also knows that we are reconciled unto him we are alive unto God we are unto God but we are dead to sin in Colossians chapter 3 you know, I'm reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God ni dide pelu christi e ma se aferi awon kan tin be loke nibi ti christi gbe wa ti o joko le owo oton olorun set your affection on things above and not on things on earth e ma ro na awon kan tin be loke ki se awon kan tin be le aye for ye are dead nitori eyin ti ku and your life is hid with christ in god as if ye yin pa ma pelu christi ninu olorun you know that verse is very difficult for the carnal mind to understand ni je mo ri pe ese keta soro fun eniyan to wa ninu ara lati ye because he says you are dead nitori o wi pe eyin ti ku and immediately he talks about your life the life of a dead person let's say ke se o to soro nipa iye re iye eni to ti ku he says ye are dead and yet you have life and that life is hid with Christ in God o wi pe eyin ti ku sugbon si be tun ni iye sugbon ati fi iye yi pa mo pelu christi ni olorun he's talking about the believer o soro ni pa oni gbagbo he is dead to sin o ti di oku si ese he is separated from sin o ti yapa kuro ninu ese he has a life of God o ni iye olorun and that life of God in him is being kept by the power of God in Christ iye olorun ninu re ni olorun si n pa mo pelu agbara re ninu christi so then we realize that sinners are dead in sin nitori na mo they are dead in trespasses eh won ti ku sinu i should do this they are separated from the life of god won ti ya pa kuro ninu iye olorun they do not have the light of god won ko ni mo le olorun they are in darkness won wa ninu okun they are under the power of satan won wa la be agbara satan but when that sinner will hear the gospel mo ni ba ti elese ni yo ba gbo yin re i begin to realize that jesus christ has died for him so ba se ri pe jesus christ ti ku fun ohun and that the death of christ is to cancel the spiritual death that he has ati pe ku 
begins to pray. Because upon the Lord. When he calls upon the Lord, asking for forgiveness. Asking for mercy. Asking for the grace of God. The forgiveness will come. All the sins are blotted away. And all the gap between him and God will be breached. And he becomes a child of God. He is now alive unto God. But he is separated from sin. He is crucified to the world. And he is crucified with Christ. He is now living with the life of Christ. Then we come to physical uh, death. When a believer dies, what happens? And uh, many believers are ignorant of this. Once a person has given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he is now a child of God. Now physical death may come. And God does not think about physical death like we think about physical death. Uh, people are afraid of physical death. Sorrow gives the hearts of people when physical death has occurred. And the waste of money comes into the barrier of uh, people who have died physically. Even believers are more sorrowful about uh, somebody dying physically than another person dying spiritually. For example, your husband backslides. Uh, well, nobody will say anything. If your husband is still coming to the fellowship but has gone into committing sin, dead again in sins and trespasses. Nobody visits you to say, oh, we heard of a calamity that happened in your home. We heard of the loss of uh, the life of God that happened in your home. We don't see any believer coming to the place and then weeping and crying and uh, refusing to eat and fasting and praying because physical uh, spiritual life has been lost. We don't have any sister coming to sit down with this uh, wife or the sister say, no, oh, I know it's a terrible thing. It's a real calamity. I know that uh, what has happened in your home is unbearable. And they begin to pray and unite in prayer that this lost person, this dead husband may come back. And the Bible says, Somebody who has been a believer before, but now has died spiritually. And because he has died spiritually, he does not want to be present among the congregation of the living. He is ashamed of the life of God. He is running away from the presence of God. And we come here on a Sunday. I will not find such a person. There is nothing that is sorrowful within us to run after that person so that we can go and pray and raise the dead. Oh, we, just feel, we just feel well he's now uh, minding his business it's because of his business he has lost the life of God. When we know somebody who was a real believer maybe you are believers together and uh, you know this man has come to you as a brother and you are a sister and then you begin to talk some things together the conversation under the shade uh, shady conversation questionable talk and eventually you get into sin you died physically uh, so you died spiritually you lost the life of God and Christ has gone away from your heart. You are separated from God. Do you know what? Eh? Why you say, well, that is sin? Well, I know that is bad. But, eh, well, there is nothing. You may not even cry. 
you may not even win especially if you're committed the sin with somebody who has been alive in Christ for 10 years for 20 years and the person might come to you and just say well uh, it's a mistake of the flesh it's, you know we'll just uh, pray about it but if you are in the choir when you still come to the choir you play your violin you play your organ you conduct your music you do everything that is being done because we do not realize the seriousness of spiritual death but you know during the week just for example somebody died in the choir all the members of the choir when they hear they'll be crying they will not be able to play their musical instruments they will not be able to practice they will say brother so and so this died and we heard about it and when I heard about it I could not eat my hand was weak I could not play anything I just forgot where I wanted to go that's physical death how about the backsliding how about losing the life of God how about uh, losing the knowledge of the word of God how about being separated from God losing fellowship with God because of the soul that sin has a child there but you see all this attitude shows our ignorance now let me ask you when a believer dies what actually has happened let me tell you what has happened when a believer leaves us here he goes right into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ you preach about Jesus you are talking about Jesus. You are reading about Jesus. When a believer leaves us, that very moment he sees Jesus face to face and says, Jesus, I'm come home. Immediately, immediately the person begins to see all the angels. He is in the presence of God. What your eyes have never seen. What your eyes have never heard. What, have never heard. what has never entered into your heart. He begins to see. He begins to hear. He begins to understand. All that we have been preaching. And uh, it has appeared well. It's doubtful to you. When he gets into the immediate presence of God, he sees everything clearly. And he begins to have fellowship. That's God. And with Jesus Christ. And he sees the angels. And they're worshiping. And he begins to sing a song that you have never heard. He joins the choir of heaven. And he, be, he begins to move on the streets of heaven. In the streets of gold. With like Abel. With Zinnah. With Elijah. With David. With Peter. With John. With Paul. And he sits down. All those questions he has been wanting to ask. All the years he has been spending on earth. Without being taught, immediately he understands stands everything in a moment of time. No more hunger. No more pain. No more sickness. You know, no more Saturday work and night shift. No more no more austerity. No use of money. No drinking of gari. No eating of rice. Everything is perfect. No night and no day. No January and no February. No Christmas and no Easter. He just continues to worship in the presence of God forever and forever. And that person leaves us here. And you know what we believers do? Yes, Or we begin our professional crying. Or we cry. Because somebody has gone to the Savior. Why are we crying? Because somebody is now in the presence of God. Why are we crying? Because somebody has been promoted. Why are we crying? Because somebody now is in the fellowship, no more in the fellowship of a people at Bagada, but in the fellowship of angels of God in heaven. That's just how ignorant we are. Now, when I don't believe that, it's a different story. And you know what has surprised me? We believers who are to be rejoicing when a believer dies. We are 
prayer the people who are sorrowful when a non-believer dies I will also show you in the word of God what happens what do the unbelievers do well the unbelievers even before the person dies they have been asking him where is your bank account so because this sickness you have we don't know where it's going to end what do you do 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 the third wife will be saying look oh I've just come write your will before you go because all these two women before me after you die the money is not going to be distributed to my children the firstborn is going to fly from America because he said ah the daddy is sick and then the, the sickness is unto death and he's going to buy a coffin they say this thing to put the to put the man the sinner inside and put in the grave and he's going to spend three thousand naira on that eh yo wa lo ra posi ti wa fi gbe ti wa gbe elese yi si eh ti ki kon ba le si yo si wa na nkan bi eh yo wa na egbe egba met egbe run meta naira lori re and they begin to collect money wa si be si ma da right for all the relatives in nigeria wa collect as e gbogbo awon e ba le ni naira e wo mu o this one naira 300 naira wa mu odun run naira you will bring 1000 naira and they collect all the money to give the man in the mortuary then they advertise in the paper that's so and so having five having 50 children seven wives so the manager of such and such a place do you know that he has a, his soul is resting in peace and uh, he's, uh, he's going to be buried there uh, in three months time and the place is uh, going to be done in Lagos and then in the village is going to be done uh, the company where the man was working they will give money all these relatives they will give money a secretary will be employed to be writing down those who brought five naira so that one year on father the five naira in our account will return to you and on the day of burial then you see them in legs real clothing and then they, they begin to kill goats and rams and cows and feed everything and then they begin to eat you are saying why are you why are you rejoicing papa went home where did he go? I, I don't ask us that one. When we get there, we shall know. We know that he had seven wives before he died. We know that after he died, they, they discovered in the place of work that he embezzled the money and went to build my house in his village. But uh, let's forget that one. Let's I, bury that one. When a believer dies, we are the people who ought to be dancing and rejoicing. Saying this person has been promoted. But you know, because of the selfishness of my heart and of your heart, we grow Jesus because he has taken this person to be with him. Jesus, why have you done this? Why has he done work? Why has he called his child to himself? Why has he promoted his own child? Why has he removed somebody from this land? of dust and taking him to the country of gold. I don't understand God. Why don't you understand? God has given passport to his own child and he said, come and sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. Why don't you understand in God? And he said, you are one should sit down here with me. Your sorrow is finished. All your turning in the world, let it finish. Come and rest. Come and get your reward. And then come and look for the day when Jesus Christ will go and he'll collect all the other living saints and collect them to heaven. Somebody who had no accommodation here. That God has called us. And Jesus has said that is your mansion. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not, I would have told you. 
prepared him. I go to him. prepare a place for you. I say I still have for you. And Christ has not prepared a place for this person. Yes, so those people say I still have for him. Being a believer, I'm to go to him. Being a child of God, I'm not to. Who was living in righteousness? Don't be no do do. He has called him home. And now he's resting in, in the presence of God. This is the only minute we do. Rejoicing with the angels. Only of Allah and Gali. And we believers are down here. I want you to. 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 I want you Why have you done this? And the person that you are crying about doesn't even know about your crying. Because for the first time he's seen Peter, he say, hey, so this is the Peter we read about in the Bible. And they began to discuss. And see the angel Gabriel and angel Michael. And you know when you are in America for the first time, you want to discuss with almost everybody. I'm opening that so bad. Los Angeles, America, I've been out there. But the place higher and greater, and they're more prosperous, and they're better in every way than America. And this person talking with everybody, all oh, the weeping you are doing here, the person does not remember. She might be told that at all, Lord, or tea, or tea, is it your pay you, Lord, you America, Lord, tea, and you take a tea, they bet, to what they bet, to what to what they bet, what you see, you know, so and when you look at the car, you say, hey, this is the car the person was using, the person has forgot car, what is car? Never tea, or bow cat, or fire pellet, or move, me got to that, or do it. Look at, his, look at his bank account. I will get to the five hundred and twenty-three naira there. Ah, oh, you, eh, 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 oh, you, 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 eh, oh,
that time at Who rebelled against the word of God? About the authority of the of the person that was to lead them into the Canaan land. And the land opened and it was swallowed up and they died suddenly. What did they go? What happened to them? You have heard about Herod. No one day. And it was displeased with people. He made a great oration. And the people said that is the voice of a God and not the voice of a man. Because he gave not the glory to God. The angel came and smote him immediately. He died and was sitting of war. What happened to him? What happened to Absalom? When he rebelled about his, against his father. And he stole the hearts of the people away. And then he wanted to reign while his father was alive. And because of that, a battle started immediately. And Joab, the captain of the of the of those who are following David. They were pursuing Absalom and those after him. And as he was going riding upon an animal, he was uh, just caught between the branches and the moon went underneath him. And somebody told Job about him. And Job went there and he saw Absalom hanging between the sky and the earth. And he took three darts on his hand and he struck him and he died. When they came back, and he told David, and he said, I about that son of Solomon. And the person said, Let all your enemies become like him. They realized that Absalom had died. And he began to weep. Oh, Absalom, Absalom. Absalom, Absalom. Absalom, my son. Absalom, my son. And he went bitterly. Why did he weep? He knew where Absalom went. You know when the little child died. David did not weep. David said, Give me food and let me eat. Why did he not cry when the little child died? And he began, he began to cry when Absalom died. About the child, he said, I will go to the child. David said, I will go to where the child is. Because Jesus said, Of such is the kingdom of God. As for Absalom, who died in disobedience, who died in rebellion, he went and he said, Oh, Absalom, my son. Where did he go? Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 19. And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. Verse 22. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. But he said this little thing. You know, when a believer dies, and uh, people at the mortuary they are saying, Well, if you don't uh, bring uh, the death certificate, we'll not allow you to take him into the mortuary. Don't worry. The soul has been taken by angels into the very presence of our God in heaven. You know, when they carry the brother to the, uh, that is there to the village, and the villagers have said, Aha, uh -huh, he was not in the village uh, committee, he was not in the village meeting, now he has died. We are not going to take his body. Let them leave the body on the street. Let it, uh, let it be there. The soul and the spirit has been taken by angels into the presence of God. And they say when he was in the world, he did not know anybody, he did not know any relative. Now he has died. Leave his dead body there. He ignorant people. The real important thing has been taken into the presence of God. 
The body is left for you to just carry about. If you leave it there, it will be smelling. It is true that will get disease. The person is in the presence of God. The person you are grudging. You know when somebody dies, uh, uh, the unbelievers, uh, they will say, "Hey, you see, he has died now. He carry Bible, carry Bible, carry Bible. This is where God now has uh, put him. Now he has. Uh, they may even kick him. Well, you are just kicking the dead body. He is laughing and enjoying in the presence of God. You can't kick him." Our life, but when you see only by walking back, you are not Eh, eh. We believe, we believe. Lord, you must go back. Jesus, Jesus. What you are going to see? If it's alone, we're going to alone. We're to see, to see. Then, what you are going to see? 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 What you are going to one ibi ti mo ti nsan wo owo apo bishop lati odi dodun meedogun oni kin kuro ni be lo se gaga kin ma bo ni bi ngba ti mo ba kuta lo ma si mi in the church where have a count and they know my name when they study church uh, in the that bank i was the one that laid the foundation stone when i die who will bury me that as an old as i am now to come into a new place eh emi to je pe mo ni apo apo ninu ninu ijo wa to je pe mo n dawo si tun si ti mo mi dada ni be to je pe ngba ti a fe lo fi ipile ijo kan lele ni e ka ijo wa emi mo lo fi ipile re lele o wa ni kin kuro ni be ni osan gaga ti mo ba ku ta lo ma si mi the rich man also died and was buried what does it mean that the rich man was buried uh, you know what it means they made announcement Mr. So and so, BD, 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 LLB, LLB, a doctor, doctor, and everything. I was all the letters we see. They look good letters. Who are studied in Doha? Oh, Kek on it. Studied in America. Oh, Kek on it. He got a doctorate degree in Japan. Oh, bow ye. He was the one that represented the country when we were talking about science and technology. On lo show do ni la de ni ba ti anso ni ta ise ona. In the village, he was given an honorary chief. Ni abule wa. In his uh, place of work, he was the first man from his uh, area to get promotion out of this level. The various uh, funeral ceremony will be taking place at such and such cathedral. And uh, children and grandchildren and wives and uh, and uh, concubines are also uh, expected to be there in the funeral service. And then they go. And the preacher will wear special dress. Going down, the deceiver deceiving his people. I will come and say, his words are following him. He bought that organ. Ah, when he was in the world, everybody we knew him. He was a pillar in this church. Even though he drank a little, even though he smoked a little, but everybody has his own weakness. His own weakness was women. Because you know, he was very generous. He gave money to everybody. Now he has died. As you have died, don't eat warm. Don't eat any other thing. Just go in the presence of God. He so rest in peace, and uh, all his works are following him. My brother, my sister, you know it's a lie. The rich man died and he was buried. All those people in that church should be weeping because he died not born again. He ought to be weeping. He ought to be crying because this is a man that was dead in sin. He was separated from God. Now without having any opportunity. To be born again, he has died a miserable death. He had a car, but he did not have salvation. He built houses, but he has no house in heaven. He has a name on that, but not a name in the book of life. He knows many people, but he does not know God. He has received certificate, but he has not received the favor of God. He has died hopeless. He has died without any hope. He has died without knowing where he's going. 
time and it's all He died in the hand of Satan. That he died with all the evil angels. He to carry him into hellfire. And in verse 23, in hell he lit up his eyes, being in torments and says, Abraham, afar off. Verse 24, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. When he was on earth, he refused to pray. When he was on earth, calling to such a place like this, he would say, Why are they crying like that? Who beats them? Ah, oh, it's the rod of our sin that beat us. It is the pain of our disobedience that beat us. It is because of the sorrow that we offended God. That's why we cry. But you know, he was sitting there and he would open, open his eyes as a big man, big man in the house of God, and look around and say, Why are they praying and weeping like this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing God. Do they not to be dignified in the house of God? But now he began to pray. He said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, I am praying. I am asking for mercy. Have mercy upon me. The prayer should have prayed when he was on earth. That he will not pray. But you know, he said, Send Lazarus. Send Lazarus to deep his finger to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this place. You know today the messenger that may be likened to Lazarus he cannot step in front of his office and give him a trial. The messenger brings a trial and goes to the secretary and says I want to see the boss. And the secretary will say, right down here what you want to go and discuss with him. And the messenger says, I'm illiterate, I cannot try. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, he drives him, get out, get out immediately. They will not allow him to see the boss today. Oh, you know, 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 but a day is coming ah, when the boss will cry for water and you will say I know that messenger he was my messenger or oh, he was my driver oh, or oh, he was clean in our office send him or send her to go and bring, to bring water and cool my tongue in this place Abraham said Abraham, son remember oh, my so remember not your air conditioned office uh, he be, he be remember your air you remember your air conditioned car. Remember that you were unapproachable, you were untouchable. Remember that you were high up and nobody could come near you. Never mind what you had your certificate. You had your palace where you were living. And now you are tormented. This is your one Your time of enjoyment is gone. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Likewise, Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. You know, that's why I'm asking you. Where will you be? What type of death will you die? Look at the prayer of a particular man in the Bible. I believe this will help in your own prayer. Numbers chapter 23 verse 10. Numbers chapter 23 verse 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number, the first part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. That's a wonderful prayer. Let me die the death of the righteous. Let my end be like the end of the righteous. Look at Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Verse 
15. Verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. And um, in, uh, you know when Stephen was going to die in the uh, Acts of the Apostles while they were preparing to stone him you see in chapter 7 of Acts of the Apostles and verse 55 being full of the Holy Ghost he looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of God he saw the glory of God and he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried with a loud voice. And they put their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And he cast him out of the city. They stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen. When they stoned him, what did he say? He called upon God, saying, Jesus, receive my spirit. Death is going to come one day. We have read in the papers how death came suddenly upon some people. We have read in history how death came upon some people. Do you know the last uh, king of the of the empire of Assyria, you do know what he did. He put his throne upon some wood and he sat upon it and he told somebody to put uh, the wood on fire and he brought himself into death and went to hell. You remember Alexander the Great? He was, uh, he was breaking a little mosquito came upon him and he had malaria and in a few hours he died. Have you heard about Hitler? He committed suicide. There are many people that have just died and gone like that. On our roads, people are dying because of accidents. And there are others who have diseases and they are dying. But uh, if you die, where will you go? As a believer, there is no fear. You go to heaven directly. But if you are not a believer this morning, I am calling you and inviting you. If you respond to my call, if you respond to my invitation, on that day, when we both appear before Jesus Christ, you will shake my hand. You will say, my brother, I thank you very much. You told me on that day. I Monday. Now I am in the presence of God. If you reject the call this morning, apart of, you will see me in the bosom of Jesus Christ. You will ask me for water. And by the God, I will not be able to help you that day. Today is the time I can help you. Call upon your God. Repent of your sin. And then he will forgive you. You will be dead to sin. To be alive to righteousness. And when you die, it will be the death of the righteous. And you will be in the presence of God. To so enjoy with sin forevermore.